I come from a family of musicians. My mother played piano and she always you know, encouraged me to play music. My father was a musician all my life and played in bars and honky tonks. And since then he's been my biggest fan. He's also my best friend. My name is Leslie Sisson. I am the front person slash songwriter for uh, Moving Panoramas. And we are from Austin, Texas. So fast forward to when I moved to New York, I just ended up joining this band with this guy, Andrew Kenny, who was the front person for a band called American, American Analog Set, who was an Austin band back in the day, but he had moved to New York. And that band ended up touring for years, and we toured you know, all over Europe and the U.S. And that was where I learned, you know, I'd been in bands and toured a bunch, but that was where I learned what it was like to, to be like a key member of a band and what it was like to take a band on the road. And so when that band kind of fizzled, it was right around the time where uh, I was living in New York, but I had purchased this house. My mother was living here, and I had just finished my first solo record here in Austin. And I had just finished it, and I came by here to say goodbye to my mom. And then I went back to Dallas where I was flying to New York. And then while I was on the plane, she passed away here in this living room just completely unexpectedly. When she passed away, that changed everything. I wanted to be closer to my dad. Um, I was kind of going back and forth, working in production here and there. And um, in the months that passed after her death, I was staying in this house and I had this boyfriend that I just started seeing and we were both here in the middle of the night. And the do my dog at the time, who was my mom's dog who's passed, uh, started growling and he came into this living room and there was a man in here with a gun and he robbed us and gave us these pills and he decided to take us with him. We got in this car with him and these pills that he gave us started kicking in and we drove around for a long time and he was just kind of out of his mind too and we stopped at a gas station at one point and he made my boyfriend go inside to get some drinks and stuff and uh, that was where I used my opportunity to be like, you gotta let us go. He wasn't gonna let me go, but he decided that he couldn't see my boyfriend in the gas station. And he was like, we gotta get out of here. He's gonna call the cops, so you drive. And that was my opportunity to run because I looked over my shoulder and his gun wasn't pointed at me at that moment. So I crawled from the passenger seat over the console into the driver's seat. And then just like in one fell swoop, just kept going, opened the door and ran. And my boyfriend was coming out at the time. And then we just ran to a gas station and called the cops. So it was really hard living in this house. And I always wanted to leave, but I didn't want to leave because I had all these memories of my mom. So it was, I was torn being here, but had all this PTSD. And so the only way I could alleviate it was to play music. And so a lot of the music that I write, whether it's directly about that situation, because I write songs directly about that or about the PTSD, or about my mom, or just about love, or loss, or being alone, feeling very alone when you have something like this happen to you. And you get a new perspective on life. That's the root of all the music for Moving Panoramas. That's the basis of how all this began. I was also teaching at School of Rock in Austin right after my mother passed, and I met this uh, student who uh, was insanely talented. And so I thought, you know what I wanna do? I wanna take Rosie into the studio and I want to show her what it's like to make a record, because she thought maybe she wanted to be an audio engineer. And I was like, I've got a few songs. Let's go in and make an EP. Just kind of snowballed from there, and that EP became a record, and that was our first record. And this mentoring project that I thought was going to be just a temporary thing has become the biggest healing element of my life. And she's still, we're, she's still in the band. The band has changed since the first record. We've pretty much expanded like gremlins. We were three-piece to begin with, and now we're six piece, and the sound is a lot bigger. And I'm still in this house, and I think that all of it has been a part of what has helped me move on. The goal here is to do something that makes us happy, that makes other people happy, and that's working. So if it grows, it grows. If it doesn't, we're happy with what we have. And I think that's just the way, that's a great lesson in life. You know, something my mother always did was just, she kept reaching, she always wanted more. And when she was, right before she passed away, she was finally content and happy and didn't want all the big money and didn't want all the jewelry and didn't want all the 
glamour. She was just like, I'm just content with what I have. And I think that that's a good lesson in all aspects of life. And I'm, we are so content with what we have. We're so grateful. It's more than I ever thought would happen. I thought I was just gonna help a kid out and heal a little bit.